otherwise, we have lots of cool stuff on the website, including UFO news. Uh, the website's updated on a regular basis, the latest. It's by far the best source. You know, I can solidly say that, not just being biased, because we're careful. We comb this stuff. We don't send you anything. We send you the best UFO news that we post on our website. And then, to top it off, if that wasn't enough, we have Jason McClellan come here into the studio to tell us about that news every week. And I'm so happy to welcome once again Jason McClellan. You know, it is such a long haul for me to come in here every week and, and do the news. Yeah. You're usually at your desk looking at pictures of Avril Lavigne. Not all day. <laughs> the majority of the day, I am combing through the piles and piles of UFO news. Right, right. And then I have to walk 20 steps to come into the studio to do this show. Yeah. It takes a lot out of me. Yep. Well, but I am happy to do it because we've got a lot to talk about, so let's do it. This is your Open Minds News Brief for Monday, September 26th, 2011. Alejandro, this has been a big story this year, not so much lately, but, uh, well, I guess this past week it certainly was. Back in the headlines, this was a big story early in the year, and I'm talking about the Jerusalem UFO videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm sure most of you have seen these videos, at least one of the videos, but uh, developments last week, uh, Israeli TV Channel 10 investigator Nite el Bouim uncovered new information about the popular Jerusalem UFO videos that were recorded in January of this year. The videos made headlines around the world. However, this new information sheds further doubt on the authenticity. The first video was taken by Eligael Gadliovich, and soon after, three teenagers posted another video of what appears to be the same object. In these videos, a light can be seen descending over the famous Dome of, rock, of the Rock, and then it flashes and speeds straight up and out of sight. So during his investigation, El Boheme discovered that Gadliovich is a filmmaker and actor with his own film production company. El Boheme also found Golan Ardiv, a film teacher, among the actors in one of Gedlievich's movies. And it just so happens that the teenagers who took the second video attend the school where Ardiv teaches. Although the makers of each video claim to not know each other, uh, this evidence made El Boheim have doubts. So he called Gedlievich to ask about his association with the teenagers. Gedlievich was very cryptic in the call. And when asked if all of this was co coincidence, Gedlievich said he did not believe in coincidences and suggested that these connections may not be a coincidence. He then also mentioned that he wanted to investigate the incident, now this is weird, from a cinematic point of view. Gedlievich then said he was too busy and he would have to go. But before ending the call, he said that everything everyone was saying about the video was true. And what he meant by that is unknown could have been a confession of sorts, but either way, Gedlievich seems to be uh, seemed to be caught off guard by El Boheim's discoveries. El Boheim then contacted the film teacher, Golan Ard Ardiv. Ardiv said he was present when Gedlievich filmed the UFO, but that he didn't know the teenagers. When asked if the teenagers went to the school where he taught, Ardiv changed his story and admitted that he did know them. But when El Boheim asked Ardiv if he had a chance to talk to the students about their UFO video, Ardiv said it had been busy uh, because they're approaching final exams, so he hasn't talked with them yet. Well, to the Channel 10 investigator, this was enough for him to determine that the videos were not authentic, although he admits the motive behind the hoax is still not clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is all pretty damning. Uh, they seem to be caught off guard, and I'm predicting that if this t television station keeps pressuring these guys, which it sounds like they're going to, yeah. we'll have a confession probably in the not-too-distant future. But uh, one person had asked about one of the other videos, which was Americans. Remember that one? Some American tourists, supposedly, that were just at the Dome of the Rock. But that one was very quickly demonstrated to be a hoax, right. uh, a CGI. And you and I, I mean... You and I have talked about this through the through the whole ordeal since the beginning, pointing out you know different red flags in each one of these videos. Right, especially the one with the, the car full of teenagers always seemed very strange to me. There are many things in that video that are very goofy. Yeah, I mean, so much of the teenagers driving up uh, as if they're like oh, trying it's like to five minutes or something of just them yeah. goofing around in the car mm -hmm. until they got to the UFO. So. Yeah, and, and it was really funny how the guys like, oh yeah, I do know those guys. <laughs> you know, once the phone calls were so bizarre. Yeah, 
So, no, I, I don't know the teenagers. Oh, you mean do I know the teenagers? Yeah, I, I guess I know them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty damning, you're right. Yeah. Well, the conclusion of NASA's space prog shuttle program earlier this year led some to believe that the United States space exploration was dead. But a publication released on Friday by NASA illustrates a very exciting roadmap, roadmap of exploration plans for the next 25 years. The publication, titled The Global, Global Exploration Roadmap, was created by 14 space agencies, including Roscosmos, that's in Russia, UKSA in the UK, CNSA in China, and NASA, collectively known as the International Space Exploration Coordination Group. Do they have outfits? I, I picture them in Jump outfits. Suits? This seems like something that uh, they got insight from Marvel Comics on. I'm not sure. But, yeah, they, they are known as the International Space Exploration Coordination Group, which sounds very exciting. Uh, this roadmap builds on a previous publication, the Global Exploration Strategy, the Framework for Co Coordination, that was released in May 2007. According to Stan Schroeder of Mashable.com, the new publication is a vision of robotic and human space exploration within the solar system with the premise humans may one day live and work in space, the moon, and perhaps Mars. Common goals and objectives of each agency within the International Space Exploration Coordination Group are outlined in the recent publication. This list includes goals like develop exploration technologies and capabilities and perform science to support human exploration. But the first objective on this list is search for life. Schroeder explains that the human space exploration missions, out, missions outlined in the roadmap are a human mission to a near-Earth asteroid in the 2030s, a deep space habitat in 2034, and a human mission to the moon in the 2020s. The next step would be sending humans to Mars, a dream many of us would love to see come true in our lifetimes. I know that's true for me. The full 38-page Global Exploration Roadmap can be read on the NASA website. And while this is exciting, you, you remind me, Alejandro, that it's nothing to get too excited about because it seems that almost monthly they come up with a new sort of roadmap. Yeah, they always have a new plan. So They don't seem to know what their plans are. Yeah. Whatever seems to get the headlines at the time. Yeah. And another thing that made NASA very popular this past weekend. By the way, I didn't ask you. You didn't get hit by any pieces of satellite, did you? No. And isn't that the funniest thing? This enormous satellite fell down, and they were tracking it. There were all these live tracking sites where you could watch, and everybody was watching to see where this huge satellite with many pieces was going to fall and whether it was going to crush us or not. And then NASA said they had absolutely no idea where it fell. That's kind of weird because they say they can track everything in space, and uh, I don't understand how they would. Ed I think it was Fox News or some uh, one of the media outlets even said NASA loses six-ton satellite. How do they do that? That's so strange. Well, and again, I think I think you know there's this illusion that we have that there's somebody, whether it's NASA or the government or somebody, who can track absolutely everything that's in our sky. And I think the real answer is we don't have any idea. Yeah, and it could also be that they're pretending playing dumb because uh, of some liability. If something got destroyed, they want to pretend, oh, yeah, it was on us. But uh, it's just, it's weird, and unfortunately these days, you can't trust anyone. Well, and, you know, we see this a lot dealing with UFOs, but as soon as this thing was supposed to have come down, right away on the Internet, it, there seem to be tons of videos from around the world claiming to be pieces of the satellite falling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them looked really hokey, just cheesy yeah. CGI. And, you know, there was some from Italy and just all around the world people saying, oh, this is the satellite. Yeah, I don't know how legitimate it is, but we did get a group from uh, England that emailed us and said while they were waiting for it, watching for it at night, hoping to catch some video, that they saw this flash of light in the red beam wow uh, laser beam shoot the ground next to him so uh, we will probably write up you know what they uh told us in our next magazine in the letters to the editor part right well if if any of our listeners got any sort of video around that time that the uh the satellite was falling i'd i'd certainly like to see it i was looking for any good video they showed a little bit on the news and didn't seem like much and you really couldn't tell if it was a giant satellite burning it certainly didn't show it it burning up and breaking into pieces mm -hmm. 
which would be very cool to see. Mm-hmm. But, well, Alejandro, a, uh, a movie is being made about the Betty and Barney Hill story. And mm-hmm. our friend Bryce Zabel, who's been a guest on Open Minds Radio a couple times, uh, he uh, is the one who plans to make the definitive movie about the Hills' experience. And uh, that's according to the Huffington Post. The film will be reportedly based on the book, Captured the Betty and Barney Hill UFO Experience by Stanton Friedman and Kathleen Martin, who both have also been on the show. There was an NBC TV movie about the Hills made in 1975 that starred James Earl Jones. Exactly. I was going to say, who is he going to find bigger than James Earl Jones? This is like one of the biggest actors out there. How do you follow up? James Earl Jones. And you certainly can't top his voice. Jimmy Jones. Exactly. So, I don't know. It's going to be a tough one. I feel sorry for the the poor actor. Maybe they'll get Chris Brown or something. That would be obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah, you can't top Darth Vader playing Barney Hill. (laughs) All right. Have you talked to Bryce about this at all? No, because it's it's fairly recent news. um, And he's been talking about lots of other stuff. He's been excited about stuff that we're doing. Um, of course, and we're excited about stuff he's doing, uh, but uh, haven't talked about this topic in particular. Going to have to ask him. Because I, I, I'm curious to see if his his goal is to actually put it on the big screen. And well, it I sounded know he's like got, that, that yeah, was the plan. I, I think so. He's got so many irons in the fire right now. I know he's really uh, working on this kind of all the president's men type of uh, thing for Majestic 12 with Stanton Friedman and all of these guys and well, it's supposed to kind of be like their lives, but uh, more like all the president's men where they're looking for the info and talking to Deep Throat and all of that. So, sounds exciting. He's a busy what is guy. What's it called? Magic Men. Magic Men. You're right. Busy guy, that Bryce. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that from him because that'll be a cool movie yeah. if they get it. I'll go in the theaters and see that. Yeah. For Sweet. sure. Yeah. Well, Alejandro, you know that I am a. Web video enthusiast. Mm-hmm. I love. I did know that. Yes, I, I. I'm glad you know that because I talk. But about I won't tell it all the audience the time. what type of web videos that you're enthusiastic. Oh, oh. About. don't go there. <laughs> this thing on. <laughs> well, the UFO extraterrestrial theme is popular in Hollywood, and we talked about that a lot. Mm-hmm. We had a, a, one of our magazines about that, but now this theme is being utilized by a popular online entertainment network, Machinima, and. They are mainly known as like a gaming company. They do a lot of gaming videos and things like Mm -hmm. that. But they're hugely popular, and they just launched a new web series titled Receiver, and that's spelled R-C-V-R. And Receiver, with its stories of extraterrestrial encounters and cover-up attempts by a secret government, will surely appeal to fans of shows like X-Files. It's very similar to to the premise of X-Files. Chris Atkinson uh, uh, Atkinson of Real SEO explains that receivers are people who have been communicated to by aliens, possessing knowledge about things like complex math that they did not before. Machinima provides this description of the series. Receivers are humanity's greatest assets, and it's the job of agent Luke Weber to track them down. In doing so, Weber is also tasked with conducting one of the most important disinformation campaigns in American history. But the cover-up is about to get even more difficult for Agent Weber. Dun, dun, dun. Up until now, the UFO extraterrestrial theme has been mostly absent from the blossoming web video industry. But Machinima, behind this new Receiver series, um, means this theme will receive major attention in the web video world. Because Machinima has one of the most popular YouTube channels. One of the most popular YouTube channels, period. I think they're like the the number five channel of YouTube. They have more than 56 million subscribers. Well, season one. That's more than we have. That's a few more than we have. Wow. Ours ours is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. But, and if you don't believe us, you can go to youtube.com slash open minds TV and see. We're pretty close to 56 million. Whoa. But if you go there and see that number is not quite there, if you subscribe to our channel, it can help us. Yeah, get us that much closer. But season one of Receiver will consist of six episodes. New episodes will be posted to Machinima's YouTube channel every Wednesday. Cool. It's cool. The next X-Files is online. How appropriate. I think so. And I should tell the audience for those people who are saying, oh, Jason's gross. I was kidding. He's into the web video in general. Just what what is happening in the world of all web video. What's gross about puppy videos? Uh, yeah. That's not what you were talking about. 
Oh, we like, Alejandro. We'll have to admit, we, we watch puppy videos here. They are pretty so addictive. So does everybody, though, because they're extremely popular. Yeah, next to porn and UFOs, they're probably next. Yeah, they have to be. People are all on the puppy, watching puppies do anything. Oh, yes. And then after that, probably The Simpsons. Yeah. Well, Alejandro, I have more news. You ready for more news? Yes. I don't know if you saw this video, but a man in San Antonio, Texas, recorded a video of UFO two weeks ago from his backyard. He explained to KENS Channel 5, first of all, no navigational lights. That's what got my attention at first. Then I started zooming in and started seeing the different configuration of the lights. The witness stated that he sees helicopters and airplanes above his house all the time, but what he recorded with his camera was something completely different. And looking at the video, when they showed the zoom in, it looked like looked like a triangle UFO and had various lights on the bottom of it. Um, it looked very similar to shape of crafts we've seen a lot before. Um, and it, it was nighttime. You couldn't really see it. And, you know, the camera wasn't that great. Um, so, I mean, the video is interesting for sure. You can't really determine anything from it. Mm -hmm. But the guy was definitely very excited about it. But in this case, I, I thought the, the news channel there, they're... Channel 5 did kind of a bad job with the report. We, I don't know, we're seeing this less and less, but it, it still exists. And they, they kind of made him look loony a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could tell he, he is a, a UFO enthusiast, and, and I think he's recorded stuff before. But when they did the interview with him, they had him in a shirt that had an alien on it. And they interviewed him by his computer, and he had an alien hat sitting on top of the monitor. I wonder, and you never know. Because some people don't realize that. Well, you know, don't wear the alien shirt. But the sometimes the people do that. But then sometimes when they come to interview you, they'll ask you to do that. Right. So, and you never know. I remember one time, you know, I had this MUFON interview, and they had me put all kinds of paperwork and stuff out, pictures of UFOs, which I did. And then he's like, "Well, can I get a video of the the page with the aliens?" And I said, "No, you know, really, that's not." what this is all about. These are what people have reported, but mostly we're dealing with, with different UFO sightings. He's like, well, I just want to get it. Maybe we'll use it in the future or something. So he talked me into it. He filmed it. Sure enough, it's like a 30-second segment, and that's one of the things they used. Oh, yeah. That was the thing they used the most. Look at this goofball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Alejandro, this is an interesting story. Reuters News partner The Wrap published an article back in August about an upcoming documentary titled Revelations of the Mayans 2012 and Beyond. The article reported that the Mexican government had released state-held secrets about the end of the Mayan calendar to the filmmakers. And when asked if the movie would mention extraterrestrials, the response given by the filmmakers was simply, everything is going to come out in time, but I can't comment on aliens or 2012. But according to a new article published by The Wrap today, this documentary will also provide evidence that the Mayans had contact with extraterrestrials. Raul Julia Levy, the film's producer, stated, Mexico will release codices, artifacts, and significant documents with evidence of Mayan and extraterrestrial contact, and all of their information will be corroborated by archaeologists. Additionally, Luis uh, Augusto Garcia Rosado, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campeche, told the RAP, this new evidence has emerged showing contact between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices, with the government, which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. Codices. Yes. The Guatemalan government is also involved with this film. While they aren't offering up any information about extraterrestrials, they are giving filmmakers access to previously classified artifacts and newly discovered prophecies. Guatemala's Minister of Tourism, Guillermo Novielli, Quezada said his country is working with the filmmakers on this documentary for the good of mankind. Revelations of the Mayan 2012 and Beyond begins filming in November of this year and is scheduled to be released in theaters in late 2012, but before December 21st. I think that that's a good motivation uh, for the good of mankind. I think that's the reason people should do things. Just so. That's what I do. Why I do everything I do. But you do everything you do? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so I'll, I'm proud of them. I'll uh, argue with that on some other time. This but. one's interesting. I mean, uh, I think it gets, get, 
a lot of people exciting, and it would be really interesting to see some sort of extraterrestrial connection with the Mayans, although the Mayans already do say uh, Quetzalcoatl came from the sky. Um, so it'll be interesting to see this show. Of course, it's hard just because mythology says people came from the sky doesn't necessarily mean there was extraterrestrial uh, interaction unless you're on ancient aliens right. where everything, everything seems to be extraterrestrial. But uh, it's still, gr of course, it's great. It's exciting. And, of course, if there's something new to come out, that would be really interesting. And it's interesting that what the heck are these governments hiding stuff for anyway? Right. They said we were keeping some provocative information locked up. Why do that? That's In not underground cool. vaults. Yeah. Yeah. It seems kind of weird. It seems kind of weird that they would have, you know, these artifacts that they've locked away. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And that, yeah. that's really exciting that they're bringing out these artifacts that have never been seen before. Yeah. That's very cool. Who knows what the extraterrestrial angle is going to be? I mean, bottom line, this is probably a publicity stunt for them to get tourism to capitalize on the whole 2012 thing, which is smart on their part. And, you know, these government officials coming forward are their, you know, tourism people. Mm -hmm. So who knows? I mean, that's most yep. likely what it is. We'll see what information comes forward. But the fact that they are coming forward and, and pushing the extraterrestrial information is kind of fascinating. Yeah, yeah. We've been watching uh, Mexican tourist information for a while because Mexico City... Their director of tourism's Alejandro Rojas. You. Not me, though. But you're Alejandro Rojas. Yeah, well, there's many in the Latin world. I thought there was only one. Well, you are wrong. In my world, there's only one. You're right. Well, Alejandro, one last thing I'll mention. Did you happen to catch Clifford Cliff on The Daily Show? I did. That was a, a good, good, good laugh. It was very funny. Cliff is a funny guy. And uh, we talked to him at MUFON in California about his appearance because this was filmed quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's a funny guy. He has a good sense of humor. And he knew going into this comedy show that that's exactly what it yeah. was. And instead of being like some people who really fight it and trying to be the stiff, straight guy and, and get upset at the jokes, he played right into it. He was a perfect guest, yep. and he, he handled it well. Yeah, he did a great job. He rolled with it, and I think he did a great job. A lot of people are out there, oh, how could he do that? He made MUFON look foolish. But, I mean, they made just as much, if not more, fun of NASA in right. this clip because they interviewed a NASA guy, too. Oh, the NASA guy looked pissed. Yeah they, yeah, they made NASA look pretty dumb. Yeah, he didn't have the sense of humor Cliff had. So I thought it was really funny. It's great. At least now people, hopefully more people know about MUFON and, and our are checking out their website. And, and that was Cliff's goal in going on the show. Yep. And, you know, you can't always be just uptight about it. I think some of the guys are criticizing need to loosen up a little bit because they're just, like, really upset. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Excellent. Well, Alejandro, that is it for the news for today. Remember to check out all of these stories and many, many more at openminds.tv, your source for UFO-related news. I'm Jason McClellan, your Open Minds News correspondent, and you've been briefed.